Hello everyone and thanks for joining. My name is Tracy Cook and I'm the online media manager for modernanalyst.com, the premier community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Digital Design Professional, Three Essential Steps to Innovate Innovative Digital Solutions. Today's featured speakers are Kim Larenroth, Chief Requirement Engineer at Odessa AG IREB, and Stan Brunet, Vice Managing Director at IREB. Today's webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, including the question and answer session at the end. Please be sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature of the GoToWebinar software. I'd like to say thank you to Digital Design Professional by IREB for sponsoring today's event. And at this time, I will turn it over to Stan from IREB to say a few words before we get started. Thank you, Tracy. So, um... Hello, good evening or good morning, wherever you are from my side. Um, the, maybe let's give a few words for um, what is IREB about. So the IREB um, is a nonprofit organization that was founded somewhere in 2006 um, with some, from some leading experts in requirements engineering. Um, they had the goal to increase um, the awareness on requirements engineering. Meanwhile, um, we have a um, quite extensive um, um, examination program with the CPRE, Certified Professional for Requirements Engineering, where we have um, about fi um, 52,000 um, certifications in over 80 countries. Um, we are publishing on RE Magazine and so on. And on the other hand, we were also thinking about, um, when looking out to the today's digital world, that in addition to requirements engineering, we need something else, some people that are more skilled, especially from the um, perspective of designing on um, digital solutions. And that's why we have um, created a new education scheme, what is the digital de design professional, where we will give you some, let's say, small overview um, in our today's talk. Um, that's where we start. Let's give a short overview of our presentation today. So first of all, um, I want to give you a short um, introduction or a short motivation why digital um, transformation is really important in our in our days. And um, afterwards, Kim will give you some details about digital solutions. What is the difference between a digital solution and a digital system? Um, he will explain the building process and the uh, concepts of the digital design process afterwards. Um, after that, I will give you a short introduction of our case study and how we have implemented this um, case study in um, JIRA and Confluence to give some practical um, background on that one here. And finally, I will close um, our webinar and give a short outlook. If we look to digitalization today, so we really have experienced that digitalization somehow has invaded our lives because these IT solutions, you know, from the past, like big SAP systems with gray boxes um, everywhere, they are not still, they are not longer um, available. For sure they are, but if you are talking about innovative software or innovative um, solutions, um, that's something else. So this means IT solutions need to be not anymore just for specialists, but they need to be for everyone. This means everyone outside is really experiencing um, digital solutions. And this also means that these solutions need to be that much integrated in your life that you are, let's say, that they are easy to understand, easy to operate, easy to maintain, and that's why we really need to understand the digital technology or digital as, as material, um, as some kind of shapeable material. This means only if you understand which, let's say, technologies are available, what are the capabilities, what are the limitations. Um, only in this case, you are able to understand um, what is the right technology 
for a certain problem that can be solved uh, to provide the best digital solution. Given the example, so um, if we have, for instance, um, a digital solution for runners, then today the solution really merge with the environment and at the best these let's say IT systems they are no longer let's say visible because you just um, perceive the, um, the digital solution so for example if you have a runner so he is maybe having on um, his smartphone or a smartwatch where he's able to listen some podcast during his running um, or to have some streaming um, service um, via Spotify um, and his smartwatch is really during um, his, his training um, monitoring his heart rate, um, his distance, his pace um, and so on but he is not that much infected by the solution so he's not to decide what I will what what to do now this means the, it's, it's quite important um, when talking about digital solutions that these solutions are really supporting um, today's users. And this is what solutions um, will make sufficient and really um, be able that the users can, can experience such solutions. When looking to the different stages of um, digital ecosystems, then we know that someone it was started somehow with some kind of digitization. When we talk about digitization, we mean um, just making stuff that was given in some some um, printed media, for instance, or some um, records to make to make a digitalization of this information. So here, in general, the technology changes. So this means you have another media, for instance, but there's no change um, really in, in the process behind. There's no change um, in, the, in the business models or what else. So um, it doesn't matter if you buy a record or if you buy um, a CD or a DVD or whatever. So the processes behind were still the same. In the um, area of digitalization, when you, for instance, have um, when you're coming from a CD going for a, for an iPod or for an MP3, then um, you changed the processes. This means you do not only digitalize or digitize your data, but you also have digital processes behind. Because as of now. Um, you have not that much um, stores selling um, records, DVDs or um, CDs anymore, but you directly sell them online. And this goes further if you go for a digital transformation, because here you're really looking on the changing the business models behind. This means, so the intention is still listening music, for instance, but today it's not um, that people's or most of the people's go into some, some retail store buying some, some um, records or um, CDs. Um, it's often the case that you have, for instance, these um, streaming services like Spotify, um, where we just have a really other business model behind. And this is only possible because we have different technologies that came up through the um, last years or last decades um, that will enable such transformation and also this technology then influences um, our processes, our business models and our ecosystems. When looking to the expectations and technical possibilities, it was a long time that really the expectations um, were higher than the technical possibilities, except for instance, um, Apollo 11 when we sent a man to the moon but um, all the other time it was mostly the case that people really had um, some something in mind that they want to solve with a solution especially in the in the dot-com um, phase but the technical possibilities were a bit behind that has changed somehow um, 
in 2007 when the iPhone um, was presented and here suddenly we see in the technology area there's a lot of what's going on so we have today we have 5g artificial intelligence um big data blockchain iot whatever this means the technology itself it's really increasing so the capabilities are um, massively increasing and the expectations are a bit behind today and this is maybe not at least because if we now have a look on our toolbox when creating digital solutions then we easily see that for sure there was something invented in the early 1977 where we had the purpose of requirements engineering and we have the purpose of interaction design we have had the agile manifesto in 2000 it's already 20 years old um, we have the Bay book, Bay book, and we, um, we had the birth of um, our CPRE certification programs. It has involved me involved for sure, but in general, there needs to be a bigger mind shift to really be able to understand these different technologies and to be able to see what is possible. How can I change the behavior of people? How can I create some, some benefits for society? Um, by developing new business models, new ideas, and so on. So big question is what's next on the methodology side to be able to shape such systems. Our point of view, it's quite important that we say, hey, if you want to create some of these innovative systems, we really need a new profession that's looking outside of the box. It's not um, just listen, not just following the way we had until now. So this means we really need people that take responsibility for the entire design of the digital solution from end to end, from the very beginning until operations and also during the evolution of the systems. We need someone who is leading the building process from the design perspective. We need someone who is really thinking in all these three things, this means in business, people, and technology. As of now, we mostly have people, if we look outside to the, um, to the IT domain, that maybe understand technology or maybe understand people, but it's quite important um, today when we're talking about digital transformation that we have in mind, there is a business, they need to earn money with, with this new business model or with this new processes and um, products. Um, there are people that are using this product. This means this product must be that easy that people are able to understand such product and that they are able to use this product. And we need to understand the technology to bring up the best solution. Um, finally, it's quite important that you are able to understand um, this digital material as a shape of a material to come up with your best solution. So that's why our answer is we need some new profession and we call it digital design. So this means we need to, let's say, come away from this limited responsibility that we have in nowadays with different roles. For instance, in the um, first um, part of the slide where business analyst requirements engineers are defining some nice concepts, then um, throwing these concepts over the fence um, to, to some architects or to some developers and say, hey, now it's your job. Um, I have documented everything, I'm fine. And if this is failing, um, it's, not, it's not my failure. So then it's yours. And this is really where we need to go away from. This means we really need to go toward an end-to-end -to -end responsibility. That's why we um, think we need two different or two new professions was digital design and digital engineering, um, where you have persons that really have for digital design a broad um, idea of the business processes of people, of the concepts that can be created. And they also know the technology that is available. And on the other hand, if we look in digital engineering, um, we for sure need someone who is able to get in all these bits and bytes for technology, but they also need to understand the business to come up with the best solutions. 
So that's enough from my side. And I would like to hand over to Kim. So um, he will talk now about digital solutions and the building process itself. Kim. Yes. Thank you, Stan. The main point when we try to understand how digital design works is that we need to understand that we are building solutions and systems at the same time. And this is what I want to introduce in the next slides with the next minutes. A good example of a solution and a system is Google. If you look at the search engine from a user's point of view, you can search for websites and hopefully get the sites that you are searching for. But when you look from a solution perspective and from a business model perspective, Google is not a search engine. Google is a kind of platform that sells advertisement space. Here you can see some advertisements on digital technology and digital something. And with this example, it's quite easy to understand what the difference is this system the search engine and all the data that Google is collecting for providing you good search results is at the same time a system that can be used to provide good advertisement and to provide you the proper advertisement that you are really searching for. And here we have two very important concepts that work together because Google is only a successful advertisement company if the search engine is successful and if there is not a good search engine it's not really possible to sell the advertisement space and to to really understand what digital technology is about it's also a great example because google grew to a very powerful advertisement platform because the company understood the power of their data in terms of search and en search engine and on the other hand in terms of a business model that can be used a solution that can be used to sell advertisement and this is what we emphasize when we talk about digital design because we have to understand that there is not only a system a piece of software or many software components running on a server that we build we are not only designing a solution a kind of business model that offers certain value propositions to our customers but we also embed the solution into a larger context. And if we go back to what Stan presented on the topic of expectations versus technical capabilities, for a long time in digital and IT business, it was the case that our customers, clients, sponsors had a clear understanding of what they want to achieve in their context and thereby created a kind of solution that the IT domain had to implement. And if we are now entering a kind of innovative phase with huge technical possibilities, this kind of process no longer works because the technical possibilities can stimulate completely new ideas, completely new business models. So you must be able to not only think in terms of systems, but you also have to be able to think in terms of solutions and of course, in terms of the context that you are trying to shape and change when you implement a new solution. A good example is also the Uber platform where you not only create a kind of solution that offers you driving services, it's also a kind of completely new ecosystems where many people work and spend their lives in driving cars, transporting people, making their money and thereby changing a whole ecosystem of the transportation business. And this is something that you can really grasp if you really try to understand that you are shaping a solution with a business model and a value proposition and at the same time shape and create a digital system consisting of smartphones, software components, apps, whatever you want that realizes the solution or part of it. And the main point very often is that people think that these solutions are highly complex. You have interconnections between different components, you have dependencies, you have innovation, you have change. A lot of people nowadays talk about speed, being faster than your competitors, innovate faster than your competitors, creating a large variety of products. And this creates huge complexity in companies. And what we say is that 
with a digital design attitude, it's it becomes easier to to grasp this complexity and to separate all the complex and difficult parts from the really complex ones because the complex relationships we typically see things that we cannot really predict is the acceptance of our solution in the market how the people will react to it good example again is twitter which is started as a kind of news platform and now is a huge communication tool for during elections it's important for organizing many events for exchanging people and these are of course things that the inventors of twitter never anticipated and this is something that we have to deal with and the building blocks the basic approach to man for managing this complexity is really to to think clearly about what you're doing and the first concept i want to introduce to you is the separation between the solution level the value proposition and the business model that you're trying to develop the system level the technical components in terms of software, in terms of technical devices, how they interact with each other, and of course, the element level, the proper details of the software, the systems that you're trying to create. And if you can grasp this, it's quite easy to separate the complicated, the difficult parts from the really complex ones, so that you can approach the complexity with the typical processes they try out things, you change your product, you adapt your value propositions, then you try to observe and learn from it and then react and change it. And here it is very important that we start to think of building a digital solution, not only in terms of a development process where you implement software, for example, in a kind of Scrum-like process, but it's more important to think of a building process of a digital solution in a much larger terms because you need a lot of preparation work, a lot of thinking, careful guidance to really approach and build the solution in a way that it can be successful. And this is what I want to talk about in the next slides, that you can really use the different levels, solution, system, and element to manage your complexity and to structure your thoughts and to structure the way you work in a really, really manageable way. So let's go into the details of the building process. I really love the word building process because it's so hands-on and you really describe that you create something that is really tangible. And I really believe that digital solutions are tangible as well. And we start, when we talk about the building process, we really start with a kind of scoping step where you clarify what you want to achieve with your client, with your sponsors, and you are, especially clarify the amount of resources in terms of money or personnel or whatever you have that is available for building your solution this is something that we learned from architecture from the from the building industry where you build houses and large skyscrapers they start with a very simple question to their clients they start what is the budget that you want to spend because when you understand the amount of budget that you spend on building a digital solution it's much easier to customize the processes, customize the scope of the overall solution, and to build a solution that really fits the expectations of the client. The next step in the building process is the so-called conceptual step. Here you really think in terms of paper, in terms of concepts, in terms of models, and try to envision the solution that you want to build, and you design the system that realizes your solution and very important to a point where you you and your team or your client can accept the risk of implementing your solution because typically the the decision whether you implement it or not is very often taken for granted if you really jump into the detailed processes but from our point of view it's really important to to get an understanding in your organization for example in your team or your department or your startup that you get an understanding of what you want to build to a level of detail that you can really accept the risk of starting to develop it because when once you start to develop a digital solution a piece of software or an app completely different processes apply because when you start to implement software it's a completely different way of working compared to working on a conceptual level and this is something that we want to make explicit 
when we combine the two things that I just introduced, namely the different levels, solution, system, and element, and the three steps, scoping, conceptual, and development, and operation, you can assign the different types of design processes to the different steps. When we start with the scoping step, we create a kind of design brief. The term design brief comes from the industrial design profession. They typically use a design brief, a very so short description of the product the customer wants, the client wants to create, so that the designers have an un initial understanding how the product may look like, what are the objectives, in which direction the product should be developed. The design brief can also be used to define certain constraints, define for example, certain technologies that you want to use, for example, artificial intelligence or augmented reality. Then in the next step, you start with a solution design to understand your business model, your value propositions that the solution has to, has to offer. And then you can start with the system design and then with the element design to develop the proper details. The important message from the slide is that these steps rely on each other. You cannot start with a system design without an initial idea of the solution, the value proposition you want to offer by means of a digital system. And then, of course, the element design, the details of the particular software or digital device that you want to develop rely on the proper understanding of the system that you want to build. And in this sense, the different design steps rely on each other. They, of course, iterate with each other. If you learn more details about the system, you learn more about your solution. And of course, with the element design, it's the same. But the point is, they are clearly separated perspectives. The solution perspective is something that addresses your customer and the solution that you want to offer. In the Google example, the people that want to buy advertisement space on the search engine, and on the other hand, the system design, which is the technical perspective of the user, the people that are using the search engine and that are reading and hopefully clicking on the ad when they search for some material. And finally, the element design perspective, which is important for implementing the solution. If we go more into details, here you see a slide with some, some statements on what is really inside the different concepts. The digital design brief on top. It should provide a vision, a clear understanding of you want, what you want to achieve, a sketch of the business model. You should always ask your client, how do you make money out of the solution that you are developing? Of course, the budget. When you look at the solution design concept, we go into the details of the business model. We talk about revenue streams. We talk about customer segments, potential users, etc. Then we go further into the details of the system. We talk about real users. We talk about existing systems that I have to connect with. And when I go further into the details of the element, we talk about or we distinguish software from devices. This is also a very important distinction from my point of view, because nowadays, not only notebooks and smartphones and tablets are the devices that carry digital solutions. We very often see dedicated devices, smart speakers, for example, that you place into your home and that you can interact with that provide dedicated services. And therefore, it's really important not only to think about software, but also to think about devices. And now, when we go further into the steps, the scoping step, it's very important that you get a complete overview of what you want to do. And here we define four different perspectives that we consider important. The first perspective is the environment. Where is the digital system and the digital solution operating? What are the people? What are the customers? What are the users? The second important perspective is the perspective of the building process. How is the digital solution realized? This is something that is often underestimated in terms of complexity. If you, for example, work for a large, let me say, insurance company and they're developing a new, completely new internal solution for their sales processes, you always must take into account not only the implementation of this system, but also the way it is introduced into the organization. And this is a very important part of the building process because 
The building process is not done when the software is implemented. The building process is done when the software, the digital solution is in operation. The next perspective is the technical one, which gives you insights into new technologies, the availability of technologies. For example, the recent advances in artificial intelligence belong to the technical perspective that you can use to inspire your work and to inspire new ideas in terms of the system, the solution and the value proposition. And finally, the social perspective, which is important to understand the complete picture. Our understanding of digital design is that people want to get a holistic, a whole understanding of what their solution is about, how it will impact society, how it will impact the environment and how it will shape the world we are living in because digital technology nowadays is shaping everything changing everything in the world and we believe it's important that people who design digital solutions take this into account when you're looking from a result perspective the digital design brief here shows you some pictures of the content you see a small storyboard that shows you how the solution could work you see schedules, you see business models, you even see detailed mock-ups, paper prototypes of the solution, which can help you to get a better understanding of what you're doing. And this is important for clarifying, the prototypes are important for clarifying the details, the initial ideas of what the solution is about with your client. The next step is the conceptual step here. I already mentioned it's important to get a common understanding of the digital solution between the stakeholders and the whole team that is working on the solution in order to accept the risk for starting the development. And this is, again, a very important commitment because when you are able to convince the building team, the organization that you're working for, if you're able to convince them that the solution idea is really working, you get a very high motivation and a very high commitment of the people that you're working with. And so this step is not only important in terms of creating concepts, but it's also important in terms of creating commitment. And from our point of view, we have to create two different types of concepts here. On the one hand, a concept that describes the solution with the business model, the value proposition, the revenue streams and the customers, and on the other hand, you have to describe a digital system, the digital system design concept, which clarifies the initial details of the solution that you want to build. Not in a very high level of detail, this will come later in the building step, but a kind of holistic understanding of the system that you want to build. And when designing these two concepts in parallel, you get a very good and precise understanding of what the solution is about, what the value proposition you want to offer is about. And on the other hand, you get an initial and good understanding of the system that you want to build to realize the value proposition. When you again look from a conceptual perspective in more detail, you see that the solution design concept con contains certain, certain canvas techniques like the persona, like the business model canvas or the value proposition canvas. You can also again use simple prototypes to illustrate what your solution is about and when you go into details of the system concept that you see some more technical figures a kind of component diagram that describes you the context the various functions and data flows of your system of course detailed specifications of scenarios and if it's necessary you can also go into the details of particular elements this is something that is a kind of risk decision if you have the feeling that you need more information on a certain type of element of your solution for example an app that uses an innovative augmented reality technology and you have the feeling that you need this detail in order to accept the risk to start the development it's fine to go into the detail this is important because this is a decision of the people involved it is not a process decision it's a decision of the people and it's a tool for improving your understanding of the software that you want to use or want you develop. And finally, the development and operation step. Here, the goal is really the realization of the digital solution. And here we go really into the details that are necessary for implementing the digital solution. Here, 
for example, the scrum processes, the detailed user stories come into place. And here we really provide detailed concepts that describe the interfaces, that describe the data structures, describe the uh, functionalities, the use cases of the software on a level of detail that is necessary for implementation. This is the important measurement again. And here it, it really depends on, again, on the people that you're working with. We are not saying it's important to define a concept on a certain level of detail. We are saying you need to define concepts that are sufficient for implementation. And you have, if in case you have really high trained software developers trained, for example, in agile processes, it's quite easy to create very lightweight specifications of what you want to achieve and develop the details in a Scrum-like agile development process. Here again, from a concept perspective, the element design concept is created based on the system design concept. Of course, here you see, for example, use case diagrams, detailed specifications of the interfaces, data structures, also technical elements in case you are developing a de dedicated device. And very important in the development and operation step, you need process artifacts that support you in managing the development process. This is an additional perspective that is from our point of view not necessary in the scoping and conceptual step because you're more working on understanding. If you start a software development process, it's really important that you manage the process in a proper way. This is something we already learned from, for example, the Scrum world or the, the Kanban processes. They provide a very rich tool set how these process artifacts, user stories, epics, etc., interact with each other. And here it's only important that you connect the process artifacts with the design concepts that you are developing in order to design your digital solution. Finally, if you look at the different concepts, you are of course creating different types of specifications, design concepts. Here the design brief, solution system and element design concepts. There are many more if you take into account the other parts or the other professions of the digital business, your, your construction, your design, creating software architectures, you are implementing. And the important thing here is not that the list of concepts that we want to create, that we want to manage is growing. It's here important to understand that these concepts address completely different perspectives. The design concepts always address the customer and the user and the client. The realization concepts always address the implementation and they are under the responsibility of the building team, the team that is creating, that is developing the software. And of course, in addition, there are evaluation concepts that you need to create in order to describe in a understandable way how you are approaching the quality assurance, the evaluation of the solution. This was a rather abstract overview. And now Stan is continuing and showing you the details based on our case study. Okay, perfect. So let's go on with our case study. So in general, we created a case study just to um, explain the concepts to really um, understand um, what are the concepts or how are the concepts structured? How, what, what are the building blocks, um, let's say, that are included into these concepts um, to understand the level of detail, for instance, um, that, that's, that is required. And also um, in our case study, we used um, JIRA and Confluence to um, implement our case study or to describe our case study um, just because to understand if our concepts are really applicable in practice because this is quite, um, quite um, um, important for us that um, we do not only talk about theory that, but we also talk about let's say things that can be really used in praxis and that's why we have um, created this case study. This case study is called your personal running coach. And the general idea is um, to have some, let's say, support for long distance runners.
So in our case study, um, we have designed a really quite long story book, um, book from the very beginning when thinking about um, the vision um, that is um, needs to be implemented um, until the really um, details of the element design for software um, element design or for device element design and all these concepts in between. So, and here we really um, used our concepts and implemented this in Confluence and Jira. I will come to it um, in a second and just give you a short overview of how this was done on, on our end. So um, anyhow, the case study um, will also be published um, by, by end of this year when we come up with um, our new um, education scheme. And then we will also provide the case study as a hands-on training um, to have some, let's say, really benefit and that the um, existing templates can be used and that um, really um, this can be used in praxis. So coming back to, to our case study, um, the idea is to create a kind of remote running trainer. And um, so our idea also in the case study is that we have some kind of stepwise approach. Maybe you start in a kind of lean startup um, where you first have, let's say, a remote running coach. Um, it is really a person um, that will give you some individual training instructions based on the information that is collected via your smartphone or your um, smartwatch. What is training, uh, what is the heart rate, for instance, your pace, um, your incline when you're running, um, and so on. Based on that, um, this information can be provided to the, um, to the coach um, via an interface via the internet, and the coach will then be able to give you some advices. And in the next step, maybe we have some, some kind of um, artificial intelligence because you can surely think of that it is not feasible um, also from business perspective or from the business case to have um, several um, hundreds of these coaches that are um, that are giving some some um, remote training to um, one by one but um, also this coach might be able to assist um, a, a certain kind of artificial intelligence and to train it that this can be used in a second step coming to the implementation of the case study in confluence and jira so um this figure you have already seen with the um, design brief, with the solution design, system design, and the software and device design on the, on the element level. And what we have done is we created um, for each of these different concepts an own um, confluence space, just um, to be sure that, let's say, um, for instance, the solution design um, is a section of its own, so this means um, people um, that are working on the solution design can really um, collaborate on working together on this solution. Um, if necessary, you can create exports and so on. But um, the really main idea behind is that people work together on that. And that's why we created all these content levels from solution level up to element level. Um, there are different spaces in Confluence where we set up the main structure of the digital design brief, solution design, system design. And we also um, have um, these templates um, that can be used directly, for instance, for personas, um, for, uh, um, for your um, business cases, and for the, um, for the modeling or for defining the revenue streams, and so on. And to manage the process view, as Kim has already um, mentioned, it's quite important, especially on the element level. So in the um, in the building process or in the step of um, developing of the solution, it's quite important that um, these elements are manageable. That's why we um, used um, Jira for this, and um, in between we had a kind of story map to say, okay, what is the really, um, what are the user stories that need to be implemented? What, um, how are they related to certain, let's say, um, use cases or user stories or data elements um, that are defined in the, in the element level, for instance. And 
Here um, we have the mapping or we, we use the capability of Confluence and Jira to have links um, in between to say, okay, um, this um, part of the element design is used or is um, described by a certain user story in Jira. And here you will be able to track all these things. So having a short look um, in, in the um, realization, so this means, for instance, when we look to the digital design brief, we have a short introduction of the, um, of the vision that is um, what is available um, by using templates. We have implemented um, all these different building blocks from the solution design, for instance, personas, um, also the mockups and that are necessary for, for the solution design level and so on. On the element level, for instance, for the software design, um, we describe all these details and all these interdependencies as well. For, um, for instance, for a UI for the um, registration screen, that you have, for instance, um, which data elements are necessary that need to be filled. This means you also have a link to um, the data model behind what is the user data, for instance. Um, you also have a link on the physical interface um, behind what is the touch screen because depending on, let's say, your entire digital solution together with hardware and software, um, you might have something else if you use a touch screen or if you use um, some, some, some keys um, where you want to um, enter your details or you just have, let's say, a voice communication. And that's quite important that you also have this interconnections that are documented here in the systems. And um, as already mentioned, so it's quite easy here because you can just make these references and link these um, different elements quite easy. To make to bring this into, let's say, in the, into the de um, development step, um, we created this kind of story map that is also used um, in, in Confluence. So this is um, documented in Confluence. And this gives you um, really the um, good overview of, let's say, all the user stories that are in your backlog. But it's not only, let's say, um, a one dynam um, dimensional backlog, but here in a story map um, that was introduced by um, Jeff Patton, um, you're able to have the end-to-end -end view of your process. Um, and in addition, you are able to classify your different user stories um, by priorities and say, okay, in which release or in which iteration um, do I implement um, which kind of user story? But anytime you have the entire flow um, visible, and that's quite important, and it's a good way um, really to keep the overview of the entire solution. In addition, as already mentioned, all the details like epics, user stories, tasks that are necessary really to um, process the development operation step, they are, um, they are managed in Jira. And here um, we are having implemented um, several um, Kanban boards, one for some kind of short-time perspective, really having um, the user stories and epics that are currently um, in in an iteration that are planned to see what is the progress in here. They are still in backlog, they are already um, done or they are still in progress. And um, we also have some kind of long time perspective where we only um, visualize the epics to see um, on a long time perspective on management level um, how we see, let's say, entire solution evolving. And um, here is really a benefit um, of these different views um, that could be generated in, with JIRA, um, providing for each and every one um, his own, let's say, dedicated view on this um, process. So it's just a, let's say, short introduction to our case study. And as already mentioned, um, as soon as um, we will go live with our new um, education scheme 
also the case study will be public. This means and each and every body could um, really um, dive into the details and we share the um, conference and Jira um, links on that. Let me give, let's give a short summary. So today in general, um, we talked about a, a lot of things. On the, on the one hand, Kim has introduced the um, difference between, between the solution perspective and the system perspective. And it's quite important really to differentiate, to come up with um, proper digital solutions. Next, we also um, differentiated the different levels um, to have some kind of better abstractions. This means the solution level um, elements, the system level elements, and the element level where we have the software and the devices. And we also talked about the different concepts that are created during the um, different steps. So for instance, the digital design brief during the scoping step the solution design and the system design during the conceptual step and the element design during the development and operation step. So your takeaways should be, in general, we talked about these different levels of abstraction to handle complexity. It was quite important, especially if we have a look on digital solutions that at least seem in general quite complex. This means we have to break them down and to see what is only complicated, what is complex to get this complexity managed in a better way. Next thing, what we have talked about is how these proven concepts that are also um, known from industrial design can be used for designing digital products. This means we have different um, abstraction levels and we have different building blocks in these concepts that are created on these different steps during the building process of the solution. This means the building process from scoping via um, conceptual work via the um, development operations um, part is really the perspective the car or digital designer needs to have to have this end-to-end -end responsibility to really know, okay, what was the very beginning? What was the vision and how this is realized? And I think this is really important for nowadays um, to come up with um, good solutions and um, to, to not think in this, um, in this silos, to have, let's say, people just um, defending their, their own, um, their own roles and this is really something that needs to be um, a kind of mind shift um, for, um, for all these people who want to create um, good digital solutions on this way. So if you're interested um, in, in, our, in, in more details about digital design, so um, just visit us at digitaldesign.org and um, so here with the um, new education scheme that will come somewhere this winter, this by end of this year, and we will probably go live with the first certifications by next year, the very beginning of next year. Um, here you will be able to really understand the characteristics and limitations of digital material. We really focus on that. Um, you will be able to manage the interaction of design, construction, and implementation itself. And it's really important to think about when thinking about solutions for, let's say, for certain users that you consider people, technology, and the business because um, you also need to know what is the revenue stream to come up with the, with a proper solution and a proper and sustainable solution on that. So that's just our contact information and here I'm done. Do you have any further questions? Thank you, Stan and Kim. And we do have questions. Um, as a reminder, you can still submit your questions into the questions pane. Our first one, there's a few questions like that. So I'm gonna kind of mold them into the same question. Uh, the questions are, what are the artifacts produced 
from the three levels of abstraction, and then also what are the activities that are involved in each. Yeah, the, the concept, the, 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 the artifacts that are produced are mainly the, the, the solution design, the system design, and the element design concept. These are containers for the various details. And the, the solution design mainly contains business-oriented artifacts like a business model canvas, like a, like a vision document. And the system design becomes more technical. You talk about Inter, you talk about elements, you talk about interrelations, you talk about goals and scenarios, and finally on the element level, you create much more details, user interface descriptions, data models, use cases, functional requirements, quality requirements, etc. From a process perspective, it depends on how you want to work. In the um, DDP foundation level, we will provide a a reference process for beginners, which will, for example, make use of design thinking as a methodology for approaching the scoping step. We recommend using human-centered design processes with iteration and evaluation for the conceptual step. And we recommend, for example, Scrum and, as, and a mixture of Scrum and Kanban techniques for the development and operation step. And here it's really important that you clearly distinguish the, the content perspective from the way you work because the way you work highly depends on your organization and on the methods that you're used to. For example, another approach could also be the say, the scaled agile framework or the less framework for scaling Scrum as a methodology for developing the solution. Thank you, Kim. Our next question, what is the difference between digital design and digital engineering? Well, this is very much the difference between, like the difference between a building architect and a civil engineer. They have very much in common. They talk about digital material, they want to shape and build solutions, but the digital designer is a person who's looking to the outside, who's talking to the customer, to the user and to the client, and the digital engineer is a person who's looking into the insights, into the technical details, talking about operation, talking about components, about code, about development. And we believe that these are complementary skills. They have to be educated together, they have to work together, but they have different directions, very much like architects and civil engineers. Thank you, Kim. And it looks like we have time for just one more question. Um, this is to you, Kim. On slide 28, you mentioned use cases and user stories in the same landscape. We have used both of these artifacts together in a modeling environment for a digital product deliverable. Sorry, have you used both of these artifacts together in a modeling environment for a digital product deliverable? Yeah, and if sure. yes, can you possibly yes, elaborate yes. on it? Yeah, sure, sure. It, it's it's a it's a common discussion I face when we talk about use cases and user so stories in the same in the same content. And what's here important is that we in, in the digital design professional we use the user story as a process artifact. It's something that you, we use to describe the task, the value that we want to deliver to the user as a description of what we expect to implement. And the use case is a much broader perspective. Here we talk about main scenarios, exceptional scenarios, flows through the, through the system. And the important relation is that a use case can, can fuel several user stories or even one user story can implement different parts of a use case. And here it's really important that you distinguish the content perspective which, for which we use use cases and the process, the working perspective tasks that you have to, have to work on, which we um, prefer use cases as a proper tool to describe the tasks. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, Stan. It looks like we're out of time for questions today. We would like to thank both Kim and Stan for such a great presentation. And again, thanks IREB for sponsoring today's event. We'd also like to thank everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I'd like to remind everyone that today's webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at the modernanalyst.com website within two business days. Thank you. This concludes today's event, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.